So today is uh, our third lecture in gastrointestinal physiology and we are specifically discussing the hormones. So we previous dis previously discussed that we have three types of hormones. Number first the endocrine hormone and endocrine hormones were also of two types the official and candidate. So the first one are endocrine hormones. The second one are paracrine. Paracrine. And the third ones are neurocrine. Now what about the endocrines? So we discussed that endocrines uh, hormones will be having four key features. Number first, they will be released from an endocrine cell. Okay, and from the endocrine cell, these secretions will move via portal circulation to the systemic circulation and from the systemic circulation to the target cell. So there is a long distance they are to cover. So from the endocrine cell to the portal circulation to the systemic circulation and to the uh, target cells. Paracrine on other hands are secreted by the endocrine cells. These are the endocrine cells of paracrine but instead of following through the portal and systemic circulation they use the phenomena of diffusion. So they diffused across a short distance and act on the target cells. On the other hand, the neurocrine cells are released from the neurons. So how they are released? They are first synthesized in the neurons of the GI tract. So let's suppose this is a neuron of the GI tract. This is the exon of the neuron. So what they do, they move along the exon and then by action potential, they are released into the synaptic, synaptic cleft and from the synaptic cleft, they act on the target cells. So we have previously discussed the endocrine. Now it is the turn to discuss the paracrines and neurocrine hormones. We have uh, two types of paracrine uh, hormones. The one is uh, the most important one that is frequently asked in exam somatostatin and the other one is histamine. Uh, what is uh, stomatostatin? Remember about stomatostatin that stomatostatin is the most drop inhibition. It will literally inhibit any hormones in the GI tract whether it is gastrin, it is cholecystokinin, it is GIEP or it is secretin, it will inhibit it. Now uh, first come to the site of uh, secretion. So it is secreted from the cells throughout the GI tract and that is stimulus of the secretion is in response to the H plus ion. So wherever there is the movement of H plus ion across the gut, whether it is duodenum or it is jejunum, in response to this, there will be the secretion of the somatostatin. And what is its job? As we discussed, that its job is inhibition of all GI hormones. Inhibition of all GI hormones. Okay. And is apne inhibitors ka What are the inhibitors for the somatostatin? So vagal stimulation is the key inhibitor of the somatostatin release, vagal inhibition. Now let's come to the second one uh, that is uh, histamine. So secretion of histamine is actually from the mast cells in GI mucosa okay, that is understood. And what is the job of in, uh, histamine? It increases the release of acid from the stomach and that is specifically via gastrin. So we also already know that G cells in the antrum release gastrin and gastrin then releases H plus ions in the stomach and that histamines potentiates the job of the G cells to release H plus ions. So clinical correlations is that we know that antihistamine famously known as H2 blockers are used in the treatment of the GI acidity and peptic ulcer diseases and the most important one are semitidine and ranitidine and remember that semitidine is 
your examiner's favorite one so read it from a good book read its each and every aspect and you are likely to find it in your exam now the next one is neurocrine so we have uh, discussed already that these are synthesized in the neurons of the gi tract they are moved by the axonal transport down the exam and then released by the action potential in the nerves so neurocrines are actually uh, many types but the most important three are vip vasoactive intestinal polypeptide grp gastrin releasing peptide that we have already discussed and a little detail we will also provide over here and then encephalins so the first neurocrine is vip where is active intestinal polypeptide so first we will uh, discuss its site of secretion so it is released uh, by the neurons present in gi mucosa and smooth muscles so neuron in the gi mucosa and smooth muscles are releasing where is active intestinal polypeptide so what is the job of vasoactive intestinal polypeptide so remember that in one action it resembles secretin and what was the job of secretin to increase the pancreatic secretion and specifically the pancreatic secretions of bicarbonate and the inhibition of acid by stomach h plus by stomach so the same job will be that of vip so vip will increase the pancreatic bicarb secretion and will inhibits the acid secretion by the stomach and the second job of the vip is the second job is the relaxation of the gi smooth muscles relaxation of gi smooth muscles including lower esophageal sphincters including sphincter so if we take into the consideration of this action that if there is too much vip that will increase the pancreatic secretions and there is too much relaxation of the sphincters so the person will have a watery type of diarrhea and their diarrhea may clinically mimic cholera so the clinical significance is that uh, pancreatic islet tumor pancreatic islet cell tumor actually releases vip and what does that vip do that it increases the pancreatic secretions and at the same time it relaxes gi smooth muscles it relaxes the sphincters that may result in the diarrhea that resemble cholera and that is why it is called pancreatic cholera so hope the vip is clear by now now let's come to the grp so as the name indicates it is called gastrin releasing peptide or dusra naam iska hai bombicin now its site of secretion is so it is uh, secreted by the vagus nerve that innervates g cells vagus nerve that innervates g cells and what is the job so as the name indicates its job is the stimulation of the gastrin release from the g cells gastrin release from the g cell now past encephalins so what is the site of release so they are the nerves in the mucosa and smooth muscles of the gi tract just like the previous one mucosa and muscles of gi tract usme jo neurons hote hain those releasing the encephalins and what is the job of encephalin it stimulate the contraction of the gi smooth muscle contraction of gi smooth muscles and the second job is that it decreases ya inhibits the secretions of fluids and electrolytes in gi tract inhibits secretion so if there is decrease or in the motility it these are there is the contraction of the sphincters and there is also decrease in the secretion of the fluid and electrolytes in gi tract it means that there will be constipation that is why encephalin and logs or we say opioids are used in the treatment of the diarrhea do not indicated these days but still being practiced and it is one among the effect of the opioids to 
inhibits the GI secretions and the smooth muscles contraction and also bringing about the contraction of all the sphincters which is esophageal sphincter, it is the sphincter, uh, pyloric sphincter or it is the in iliocecal junction. So it brings about the contraction of the sphincter, decreases the secretions and give constipation and that is how opioids are used in the treatment of the diarrhea. With this we come to the end of this lecture. Thank you so much.